The book of Matthew is not just an account of who Jesus Christ is, but it also an eyewitness of his earthly ministry. The primary theme of Matthew is this, Jesus is the promised Messiah who provides because he is the Son of God. As it was prophesied in Isaiah, Jesus came from on high to be our Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Now that we covered the quick historical background of Matthew, it is imperative that we are reminded of the basis of all and any sermon we hear. The gospel of Christ should be the foundation of any sermon we listen to. The one true gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as demonstrated within the book of Matthew, Luke, Mark, and John is that the virility of Christ, the virility of Christ lies in his life, death, and resurrection. The one true gospel of Christ is manifested in his life, death, and resurrection. By this, we know Jesus is the Christ or the promised Messiah. Therefore, to escape the wrath of God, one must accept the gospel and live it. He ain't asking for perfection. He's just asking for you. Just you. Come to him. Believe. He's just asking for you. Not perfection, because he already knew you before you were born. If it bothered him that bad, he would not have created me or you. So, be sure to remember the true gospel. Be sure to live the gospel. Breathe the gospel. And carry the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember this. Remember this all the days of your life. With your permission, with your permission, I'd like to take up some of your valuable time to encourage you to consider the birds and the dogs. There are days in which I felt like giving up or or wonder how can I go on. Sometimes I I feel like losing my mind. But by his grace and mercy, by his grace and mercy, I bounce back. Uh And I have a loving, loving, loving mother who let me know with a firm hand and a gentle heart, baby, you need to to, to snap up. So I'm grateful that I have a mother that helped me to get my bounce back. It is by his grace and mercy Mm -hmm. that I am compelled to take notice of the birds and the dogs. So, beloved, let's go hiking. (laughs) If you remain outside long enough, you're going to see some birds Uh and somebody with a a dog somewhere. But you know what? You will not be able to truly enjoy the hike or the walk if you allow yourself to be distracted. All right. So if I could please ask one of you Deacon, maybe Deacon Hagee or Deacon Harris to come, I just need to borrow you for two or three minutes. <laughs> Yeah, you could come. You were talking about marathon, so you come. (laughs) All right. There are three main distractions we are often dealing with. They take too much of our focus. The first distraction is real of self. 
It's okay to have your own dreams and goals and desires. But when your, priori when your priorities are out of order, mm -hmm. that's, that's the right. problem. That's right. That's right. That's right. But it's out of order. The second biggest distraction is the second biggest distraction is broken dream broken right. and broken heart. Right. That's self-explanatory. Uh. And the third biggest distraction we have is sin. I know a lot of you young people don't want to hear that word, S I N, sin. It, it is what it is. All right. Okay. Now, to give you an, an idea of the cycle of, of distraction, now, see, I'm not trying to come up with a cute little theory to impress you. I'm speaking from experience. All right. That's right. That's and, and from observation. Because I had, to, I had to learn a lot before I got fully into the ministry. All right. So, let me give you an example. Many, many, many of us single people, that's the first attraction, real of self. Uh -huh. Got lots of different plans. <laughs> real of self. There you go. Oh, huh? The real of self. Okay. We, many, many, many of us single people get involved in an unhealthy relationship just for the sake of having somebody. Now, when that don't work out, which often it does. <laughs> you got to deal with a broken heart. That's right. Or a broken dream. That's right. If you're not careful because you're overwhelmed with broken heart or broken dream, you turn to sin to nurse your hurt and pain and distraction. I got a brick. It's small. <laughs> but sin can be very heavy if you're not careful. Just hang on. Just hang on. I got it. Oh, no, no, I got you. Watch this. Watch this. I got it. This is the, this is the provision of God. Uh -huh. Okay. Can you hold this for me? Yes, sir. Right there. Just stay right there. Okay. Yeah, hold that. Got it. Now, look out the box. Because you, you, you're focusing on your distraction, right? Yeah. Now, let me ask you real quick. quick. Can you see the provision of God? Can you see where... No, I rest my case. We lose sight. We lose sight of the working power of God in Christ. Just by, he, he, he gave you an example. No, I can't see. That's right. You lose sight of the working power of God in Christ, in your life. Uh -huh. You can't see too clearly. Uh -huh. And yet, even myself, I confess that we blame God. That's right. That's right. God said, I told you not to do, well, well. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. We blame God. But God is merciful enough yes. to remain patient yes. with us. Yes, so, take care not to be so distracted that you lose sight of the working power of God in Christ in your life. Otherwise, the distraction 
If not dealt with prayerfully, will grow a thorn and re choking the joy out of your spiritual garden. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Now I must thank you for bearing, bearing with me this fall. Let us go hiking and marvel at the birds and the dogs. Watch them birds and watch them dogs. Let's look at the birds and consider the fact that God's eye is on the sparrow. The birds are focused on one thing, yeah. the nest, N-E-S-T. Yeah. They build the nest. Uh -huh. They raise their young in the nest, yeah. bring food into the nest, yeah. mate in the nest, yeah. rest in the nest, uh -huh. wound themselves in the nest. Uh -huh. And they rake out the storm in the nest. Yes, that's right. That's right. Go ahead, Go ahead. Go ahead, preacher. They travel in the air, but always return to the nest when necessary. But listen, they know when to leave and build another nest. Such knowledge is rooted in their instinct. I-N-S-T-I-N-C-T, instinct. Uh -huh. All right, when season change and or environmental danger arise, they migrate. Yeah. Something inside of them told them, hey, we got to bounce. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> As they migrate, they are driven by discipline. They got to have discipline when they migrate a long way because there are distractions right. along the path of flight. Yeah. Instinct let them know when they reach the right, the right destination. Yeah. But discipline compels them to be careful yeah. in avoiding the temptation to Take the shortcut right. in the flight. Wow. Wow. Discipline also compels them to be patient uh -huh. in rebuilding the nest. Uh -huh. Let me ask you real quick. Are you disciplined? Are you disciplined? All right. If not, just be warned because the word of God says, in Proverbs, that a man without discipline yep. is like a city without walls. Just right. saying. Yep. All right. The bird, the bird is secured as long as it has the nest. The nest is its refuge, R-E-F-U-G-E, -E, refuge. Mm -hmm. Their instinct keeps them in the nest. Mm -hmm. That is their refuge, refuge. Now, I ask you, where is your refuge? All right, all right, all right. Where is your security? All right. It better be in the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Only, mm -hmm. only in him can you find peace like no other. That's right. Only in him can you withstand the storm. That's right. Only in him can you gain the ring of faith and yeah. survive. Yeah. And survive. Mm -hmm. Did not Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6 say, Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Yeah. So yes, oh yes, yeah. you can survive what comes your way. Yeah. Just be sure to keep your refuge in Christ. Yes. Everybody okay so far? Yes. 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 Preaching, Doc? I'm talking well, yes, I hope. Yes, okay. Yes, watch them birds and watch them dogs. All right. Oh, beloved, let's not forget the dogs. <laughs> let the birds, dogs, are not forgotten. Sure, there are some owners who neglect or abandon them, 
But somehow, there's always an animal lover out there somewhere who can spot a dog in distress. Yep. Nowadays, there are laws and shelters protecting dogs. Yep. Some, sometimes late at night, I be watching TV, especially Sunday night, be watching TV at a commercial with music, uh -huh. similar to Feed the Children right. program. You know, you gotta be a little bit emotional and, 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 and godly because, you know, you're about to see people who may not be fortunate as we are. Uh -huh. And I'm getting, I'm getting to that mental state. Break it, break it. And then next thing I know, I see a dog who had no legs and he got real. Uh -huh. So it's just like, you know, we don't see, a lot, we don't see, a, a lot of people are very, very, concerned with animals, uh -huh. That's right. the welfare of animals. Uh -huh. And sometimes I have to remember, wow, we are in a society where we really do want to make sure the dogs and the cats and, and, and pets and animals are, are safe. Yeah. That's right. that, can, that lets me know, hey, you know what? God does not forget anything in his care. That's right. Okay, now, in Matthew 15, the woman who was confronted with Jesus was right when she mentioned that, hey, even the dog can get some help. That's right. That's right. That's right. She must have been a very observing woman. She may not know much, but she knew enough to remember that if the dog under the table can get a blessing, so can she. And she told it to the Lord in his face. Was she being rude or too brazen? No, because she, she in her day and time, her non-Jewish people were considered beneath society. That's right. Samaritan and other foreigners were considered dogs by the Jews. That's right. Isn't it funny that in the Bible they everybody wanted to look down on the Jews, but the Jews turned around and looked down on somebody else. Which all I can say is we gotta be careful how we treat people. But anyway, Jesus never thought the way her society thought. Uh -huh. But he knew her faith. He knew her faith. He wanted to, he wanted to use her faith as a testimony. Uh -huh. That is why he verbally compared children, Jewish believers, versus dogs, non-Jews. In other words, he seemingly, seemingly said, so you want me to give what I have to offer my people to you? Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, the sister wasn't having it. She wasn't having it. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> she wasn't having it. That's right. She, like most non-Jewish family, her home was most likely far from the edge of the city, since Jews and non-Jews were often segregated in most places in those biblical days. There, there, there you see. Let's look in her mind. Segregation and how society looked down upon her people. Segregation and how society looked down on her people did not stop her from seeking favor from God. She didn't care about what kind of circumstances she was in. She said, I'm still, I'm still going to have access to the favor of God. That's right. That's right. That's right. Circumstances do not speak for me. They happen, but do not speak for me. That's right. That's right. I am going to seek favor yes, from God. Yes, she must have gained faith from looking at her dogs. 
She knew if a dog can get the crumb from the floor, uh -huh. then yes, God can bless the person anywhere, anytime. With that revelation, she confessed it to the Lord. Isn't it good to know that if even a dog can get a blessing, so can you. The dog, the dog ain't got to worry about, ain't got to worry uh -huh. about what to eat or where to eat. Just lay there. That's right. <laughs> Just be still at the table. Uh -huh. Don't this revelation remind you of Psalm 46, verse 10, yeah, yeah. that said, Be still and know that I am God. Right. Right. Be still and trust God. Yes. Just be still at the table. Yes. Be still when you're unemployed. Uh -huh. Be still when you're about to go crazy. All right. Be still when you're in pain. Be still when you are confused. Yes. Be still if you are left alone and no one cares. Yes. Be still if you're tired. Yes. Be still if you're down and out. Yes. Be still if you are fed up. Yes. Be still when you are about to throw in the towel. Yes. Be still if you have nothing but a half a loaf of bread and a half a jar of jelly. All right. Be still when you are about to lose your mind. Be still if you have nothing but a dollar and 44 cents in the bank. Yeah, be, still. be still when you're not granted promotion at work. Yeah, be, still. be still when there's no peace in the house. Yeah. Be still when you're in the jail house. Yeah. Be still when that man walked out on you. Yeah. Be still when that girl don't call you back, fellas. Right. Be still when you feel like there's no hope in sight. Yeah. Oh, be still. Yeah. Just be still and know he is God. Be still and acknowledge he is all you need. Walk in it. Trust this revelation. Just lay there and be still. So there you have it. As we watch them birds and watch them dogs, we have learned at least two things. The bird taught us to pay attention. Yes, pay attention so that let the birds who rely on the law of gravity, the law of nature, uh -huh. by instinct. Uh -huh. We must rely on the will of God in Christ yeah. by faith. Wow. Yeah. 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 The will of God, the saving grace of God, uh -huh. the favor of God in Christ. Yeah. Beloved, beloved, that is your nest. That is your refuge. That's right. That's right. That's right. The dogs taught us to be still, for God shall provide. Yes. The dog is trained to obey the master's will. Yes. Dogs right. are very committed for their Lord's loyalty to their masters. Yes. Likewise, we must take care to operate ourselves according to the will of God. Yes. What's the will of God? It's simply this, love the Lord yes. with all thy heart, yes. for he first loved you. Yes. What's the will of God? Love the Lord with all thine heart, yes. for he first loved you. Right. If you plan to walk with God, you got to come to him. And be, 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 you got to, I had to learn that the hard way. If you're going to, when you really walk with God, you've got to allow him. You've got to allow him to rearrange some stuff in your life. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. If you don't like that, uh, I, I just know that you better like him if you want the best. <laughs> The, 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 every time God got something for the people in the Bible, the first word he said, come. Yep. Moses, look at the burning bush. He said, Moses, come on. Yep. Abraham was doing his thing. Yep. God said, hey, come on. Yep. 
King David was in the temple and he said, come on and take the, and see the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. Come on into the sanctuary with yeah. praise. Yeah. Every time God wants you to do something or you want something from God, God always has the first thing, come. That's right. All right. Yeah. And let him rearrange some stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, Yes, once you come to the Lord, there's nothing else you can do but to be still. Yeah. Close your mouth, hang up the phone, stop crying, and, and just go ahead and confess that I had enough of this mess. That's right, that's right, Brian. that's right. Get up and get yourself marinated in his will. Oh yes, oh yes, be still when you come to the author and the finisher of your faith. Be still and love the Lord at the head of your life. Be still, you never got to beg for anything or anyone to stay in your life. If it meant to be, it will stay. If not, bow, wipe your face and do a happy dance. As a child of the Most High God, you are not ordained to beg. Just know, just know that he alone is God, yes. your everlasting refuge. Yes. Put both lessons, both lessons of the bird and the dog together. Yes. It's this, take care to make Christ your refuge and be still. I repeat, take care to make Christ your refuge and be still. So that you can see that he alone is God Almighty. Sooner or later, sooner or later, the hike is going to end. You'll look up and you'll see the gate up yonder. Hey, with a tired body, yet with a happy soul. You can look at the birds and the dogs and say, in the word of the late Dr. Martin Luther King, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. To God be the glory.